So one of the questions that um, we always have to ask is, when somebody makes an assertion, how do we figure out what's true and what isn't? Um, what is an informed opinion and what is uninformed? And, and a lot of us look to different sources of information. Um, you, might, you, you know, you listen to talk show hosts. Um, I, I suspect that uh, some of you may, may or may not listen to talk shows. Um, Dr. Phil, some people watch Dr. Phil and live and breathe by what he says. Um, others, uh, Oprah, I hate to admit it, but a lot of times people look to her for wisdom and information. And th the bottom line is, is that how does this information um, uh, stack up against um, things that have been verified scientifically even? so. In working with such of these the, such questions as these, how do we best use psychology uh, to discern what is based in fact and what is just a matter of opinion? And fact versus opinion is a lot of what this particular aspect of psychology is about. We need to separate these two so we know exactly what. Um, what it is we're dealing with. If it's one person's opinion, then there's not, you know, there's nothing to argue over per se. They're, they're entitled to their opinion. On the other hand, if, it, if they're claiming that something is a fact, then where's the evidence? And, and how do we establish the evidence to uh, provide uh, um, backing for making the assertion that a lot of people do? The quote you see before you here is was made by Madeleine Langle. Um, and we have an extraordinary level of confidence in intuition, and when in fact it is extraordinarily inaccurate. Um, there are three main things that I want to talk to you about in this particular video. And that the first one is something we refer to as um, hindsight bias. And uh, I'll explain these each in order as we move along here in uh, each of the aspects. So hindsight bias. Um, another one is uh, the idea of um, uh, overconfidence might be the easiest way to put it. Uh, people have a amazing confidence, have an amazing level of confidence in their hunches. And you see this all the time, even while I sit here recording this video and the Olympics are going on, and um, uh, uh, people will make hunches or make um, uh, assertions about which team will win, which athlete's going to win this particular heat. And, it, and oftentimes they are vastly overrating their weighing of the evidence. And then the last one, of course, is uh, perceiving um, order. In, in random events. And the thing to keep in mind, particularly with this one, is it has to do with wiring. Uh, we are wired for perceiving order. The problem is, is that we oftentimes will see it when it doesn't exist. And that's part of each one of these. So let me take apart each one and then we'll um, uh, talk in a minute about um, the nature of each. Now some of you may recognize um, uh, this particular picture. It's, it's a picture of deep water horizon. Um, and you may or may not, that may ring a bell for you, uh, it may not. And it was an explosion um, of a uh, oil rig out in the Gulf of Mexico, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was. Anyway, um, the, the deep water horizon uh, was one of these things that uh, brings us and has us looking at uh, the particular uh, aspect of hindsight bias. And the reason I say that is that a lot of people um, perceive the fact that um, because they... Um, uh, in a sense, look at the data and said, I, I told you so. Um, and that's uh, part of the same thing, is 
I can look at the data and say that I perceived it ahead of time when in fact as the old saying usually goes um, is hindsight is always 2020 hindsight equals 2020 and and that's just a, the nature of the beast we uh, we have this phenomenon that we call I knew it all along I could have told you that was going to happen you know a lot of the the talking heads on on TV and radio are are, are experts at um, making this conclusion um, because you know you can say well I look at all the data now I could have told you that this was going to happen um, and yeah that may be true but it doesn't mean that we can have the, enough foresight to know about it and hindsight bias is one of these things that uh, we engage in on a regular basis that is part of um, uh, our understanding of things now another example is really some of the insights in uh, psychology um, when we listen to them we say uh, you know duh in other words I could have told you that and that that may be true because it seems like a lot of the insights in psychology are um, relatively uh, well appear relatively like common sense and that is part of the hindsight bias that we engage in now the other phenomenon that w that we often are afflicted by is something you can just simply refer to as overconfidence and it's not it's not arrogance um, it, it is a lot of times without experience uh, people often overestimate their ability to do something or accomplish something and so um, as you see in your book there are a couple different anagrams there that that most people when they are asked how quickly they can actually do it they vastly uh, overestimate how quickly they can do it in other words I can look at it and say oh, I'll, get, I'll do that in two minutes and that's an overconfident statement um, as you get older a lot of times if you're learning anything at all uh, you you uh, overestimate the demands of whatever it is you are doing um, and and that ends up being uh, a wiser thing to do than to underestimate and the the fact of the matter remains is that overconfidence has a lot to do with underestimating so when students look at a module or look at a book or look at a project their tendency is to underestimate how much time it takes and that's the same error is that uh, if you have a particular project and you say uh, this project will take me uh, it will take me about 12 hours let's just say for example and that's library time writing time everything if you are wise and not get caught up in the overconfidence you might consider adding an extra six hours to do it because there are a lot of other variables that get in the way of of accomplishing some project you have um, the, the wiser students that I've seen who fight against this overconfidence tendency are the ones who overestimate how long it will take um, it, it really is all gravy if you overestimate get it done sooner than you expected and then you can turn to whatever the next project is so overconfidence is one of the is, uh, is the second of the three aspects of interfering with thinking critically um, hindsight bias and overconfidence now let's go on to the next one okay now the last one so what let's review real quickly first of all we talked about hindsight bias and how our tendency is to say I knew it all along and that's that's part of the uh, tendencies in us that fight against thinking critically second one overconfidence and our tendency to um, overestimate the the uh, our ability to um, perceive things and, and make conclusions and so forth with data the last one is uh, this one and this is perceiving order 
in random events. Perceiving order. And the thing to keep in mind here is one thing is wiring. I mentioned this earlier one, as we were getting started. We are wired to look for order. And we'll talk about this um, in another uh, module. But we look for order. We look for patterns. And that that's w what happens. So when we per perceive order in, in what we know to be random events, we tend to, again, overestimate o with overconfidence. And we, a little bit like this little uh, 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 cartoon suggests, a bizarre sequence of computer-generated random numbers. Um, we look, for, like I said, we just tend to look for order. And patterns are part of our neurological uh, framework to, um, whoops, patterns are part of the neurological framework uh, for us to perceive uh, nature around us. As a matter of fact, when you look at, uh, and it's not random at all, but when you look at different things in the room around you, like a sofa or the door or a sink, those have all been, those patterns of, of uh, objects have been learned over time, and it capitalizes on your tendency to uh, perceive order in things. Unfortunately, with this, then, we tend to get blind to uh, uh, randomness, and we place way too much confidence in the patterns that we see. Um, the point to remember here, all right, is that um, overconfidence, our tendency to perceive patterns, often lead us to overestimate our intuition. And, and a lot of people you hear will actually make a big deal out how accurate their intuition is. And that couldn't be farther from the truth, but it, it boosts their sense of self that they're able to guess rightly. But again, some of these things really do get in the way of our ability to do that. So hindsight bias, overconfidence, and perceiving order. Their connection is, as I said, their connection is interfering with our ability to think critically. And psychological science allows us to overcome these through the scientific method, which we'll talk about in a little bit.